Hey everyone, Eric here. This is part two to a video about looping, which is the do-it-yourself artificial pancreas. After getting Annalisa set up on custom profiles, I put the camera on the table and we just had an impromptu conversation about how we've seen ourselves change our management style for type 1 diabetes over the last 12 years. We both were diagnosed at similar times, we're both similar ages, and we've gone on four bike trips now. And so you see how uh, that's changed our mentality, but then actually how we get results with type 1 diabetes management. So I hope you enjoy. Where if you go over to my loop, which is the developer branch, you'll tap on exercise mode and see three custom profiles that I've designed, and that is what I want to walk you all through. This can be a bit ad lib and, you know, but like, I think many people have been curious how Annalise and I manage our blood sugar on the road. And like, we both have, we were both diagnosed as teenagers. Mm -hmm. I've worn Medtronic pump most of my life, but I didn't wear CGM for a while. Mm. I used to go between pump and manual daily injections pretty frequently. Because I didn't really see a value in an insulin pump. And like maybe sharing like what was our blood sugar like honestly like on the Trans Am? It was horrible. It was like probably amongst my worst blood sugar days was on the Trans Am. Just because we would be biking all day and then our bodies would stop and our bodies would be so used to cycling all day long that we would both skyrocket to like 300 for the whole night. <laughs> and we would both w wake up like feeling horrible. Yeah, with the only times to correct either if we came crashing down low and it woke us up in the middle of the night, or we woke up at 300 and took a giant shot of insulin and then go riding. <laughs> and I feel like we did that because with type 1 diabetes, if you want to... <laughs> love it. <laughs> if you want to live a certain like level of risk, you have to take that semi in your blood sugar management. And then like Alaska was the first time you saw me loop. Yeah. And that's where one of us was looping and one of us wasn't. You were just on Omnipod. And like every single morning was different. Like I was in range and you were still dealing with that roller coaster. Yeah. It was like you could really see that contrast. And now here, like what's it been like in India in terms of like how many carbs we're eating and overnight lows? Like what's that felt like? Yeah, so the kinds of food that we're eating, like right now we're staying at an Airbnb and every night they're cooking for us. But like the amount of rice that we're eating is absolutely insane. Like we'll just keep ladling on rice because they just eat a lot of rice here in India. Um, and we keep saying that we should measure it out, but we never really do. And so we just kind of assume that maybe one ladle is 40 carbs. And so we're basically just guessing and we're just throwing all this at loop and just kind of trusting loop to just figure it out and it's amazing to see that overnight like we do go up to 250 or 300 sometimes but like we wake up at 100 because overnight loop will fix it so at least we're not waking up high <laughs> yeah and the analogy i always share with people is before loop like we're always trying to throw bullseyes and anytime we don't hit bullseyes we're either low or really high and now with automation, like we're just trying to hit the billboard. And I think the difference between what Annalisa just had where you had higher target, which is basically like what the 670 has right now, is now with these custom overrides, like this is the closest I have felt to having an honest system in terms mm -hmm. of how I manage diabetes, but also being able to see what the machine is thinking and tell it ahead of time and retrospectively, what's going on. And the first time living with this disease, disease for what, 12 years? Like diabetes truly has taken like a step back. And I feel like we don't truly take a compromise on these trips anymore. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, if someone's like hesitant about looping, cause it's super overwhelming. Mm. Anything you wanna like, tell them as we close off our little outro interview? I think one of the main concerns that people have is just trusting a machine to take care of their health. But I think the way to look at it and something that, that Eric said a lot is that like there's more 
there's more human error than there is machine error. Like this is one of the only diseases where the patient has to constantly monitor their this medication, insulin, that like can keep it keeps them alive, but it can also kill them, which is really dark to think about, but it's true. And so it's actually much safer to let a machine handle it than like a human, because we're not meant to be pancreases. <laughs> Yeah, we're like doing all the work for a pancreas. It's not working. <laughs> and so it's amazing to have some of that burden lifted off of our shoulders. Thank you to like the thousands of hours of volunteers, um, people who dedicated years of their lives developing Loop. Because yes, it's the do-it-yourself do-it-yourself community, but this is linking up into the major corporations. Um, a nonprofit to follow is Tide Pool who is taking Loop and making it FDA approved, basically a different version of it. But they've already partnered up with Medtronic, they've already partnered up with Tandem, I believe Dexcom as well. I would be surprised if Omnipod hasn't signed on. And so you see that this volunteer work that really has changed our lives overnight, like really is impacting millions of the diabetics around the world. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, in the description below will be links to download the new code, links to Loop Docs, and that's really the best place to start. And with that, remember... You can go anywhere! Do anything. <laughs> also... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, sign up for the Miles Portrait newsletter. <laughs> One way to support us. <laughs>